There are only two things that really matter in, in my assessment of people. It, it's little e and big e. Little e is they want to escape from life. Big e is I enthusiastically, passionately, wholeheartedly and gratefully embrace all my life. Want to try that? I enthusiastically, passionately, wholeheartedly and gratefully embrace all my life. Not when you win the lottery, but when you also lose the lottery. It's everything. When you are well and when you're not. Right? And that's a big E. Most people, it's just a little E. Every disease is an escape from life. Every disease is an escape from life. So the only way we can really embrace life is when we know that we have a soul, that there's more to us than just the superficial nonsense that we go through. So treatment is basically to do with the conscious, what's really there on the surface. You know, uh, How will I treat uh, the fact that my mother is yelling at me? Well, you go out, you do this, you do that. It's all conscious. Then at the unconscious, which is where the psychologists live, is, is where there's love and hate. You know, I love her, I hate her, I love her a bit, I hate her a bit. Today I love her, tomorrow I won't love her, uh, back and forth. Or back of this, this admixture of love and hate. So if love is admixed, it's never pure love. It's something else which we can call a more superficial emotion, although very nice, happiness or joy, whatever it may be. But it's never deep love because it's always admixed in the superficial unconscious with, uh, with negativity, love and hate combined. And most people go through their lives, you know, at the moment you are 80% love, 20% hate, Someone does this, you'll be 20% love, 80% hate, back and forth, back and forth. That's where they are. But there's a level under that, which I call the deep unconscious, or if you like, the soul, or whatever word you like, which is just pure love, which is the Buddha nature, which we all have, if only we knew it, with a capital K, because if we really knew it, then we would live it. But we don't know it, Therefore, we don't live it. So the work, really, you can spend... If Once you get caught up in the superficial unconscious, you can stay there forever. Well, how are you today? Oh, I hate mummy less today. Oh, that's very good. And I only hit my husband twice today. You know, wow, that's really an improvement. Or you can go... Or you can treat, you can give him Prozac or whatever the damn thing may be. You know, you know what psychiatry has become? It's now called Prozacatry. This is, right. So you've got... You've got you know, I've got to do something, I hit the bitch, I leave, I do this, I do that. Or uh, hopefully you love her a little bit more, a little bit less, whatever it may be. But in the deep unconscious, there's only love. And that's what we all are, basically. And we spend our lives, hopefully, trying to find our souls. And um, Freud used to have a correspondence with a Swiss priest long time, long correspondence. And he once said to him, uh, I envisage a new profession of secular ministers of souls who may be doctors, but must not be priests. But, who, but secular, well, the soul doesn't need ministering to. It's perfect. It doesn't need to be helped. But we need help to find the soul. We need to be ministered to to find what is already there. You know, what Freud and, and others have called, you know, what Tolstoy called the, the, the God within, what um, Ainsley Mir said, the purpose of meditation is to find the wealth within. There is this within us, this soul. Now, that's all very well. So you can spend your life meditating to find your soul. And that's, that's a pretty, particularly uh, selfish activity, it seems to me. What are you doing? Well, I don't care about her. I'm finding my soul. And I don't think it works that way. It may work in some hermit's cave. It may work in, in, a, in a monastery. I don't think it works in the real world, which is why one of the greatest of the, uh, of the Japanese Buddhists, Shinran, 
uh, anyone heard of Shinran? No, it's interesting because he founded what's called Shin Buddhism, which is the largest Buddhist sect in Japan, much, much, much more, more numerous than Zen, which everyone's heard about because it's very catchy. But, um, and Shinran did something very unusual. He left the monastery and he, and he got married and had children because he said, this is where the work is in the real world. This is where we have to re not just meditate for ourselves, but do something out there for others. So, the essence, uh, who, who is a mother here? Yeah. Who has had a mother here? <laughs> right? Okay. Right. Now, I thought when I started off in psychiatry that, that it's only the patients I saw or the other psychiatrists saw who had problems with their mothers. I thought everyone else didn't. I, I, I did, but I, my brother, well, a little bit. But I thought everyone didn't have this problem, only psychiatric patients. Then I realised everyone does. I had a, a doctor come to see me once who lives right around here. And he said, no, you're completely wrong. I have a wonderful relationship with mummy. Uh, a wonderful relationship. Ha, 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 ha. Never saw him again. He ran out the door. <laughs> so what, what, I'm what I'm suggesting is look outside yourself. Try to find not your soul directly. You've got to find somebody else's soul. Ultimately, that comes down to finding your mother's soul. But, when you, but you go out to come in. You don't go out in order to come in. But if you go out, then you can come in. So it's far, far more important to, to go out. To go out. You, most of you are married or as good as or were or will be or something. <laughs> or have children or will or are. Right. So just think. Go look at the other person. Go into the other person. Find the other person's soul then it's easy to find yours.